heard you before talk about this and I've and ever since I've heard you say it I've realized it more and more that it it dominates every aspect of everyone's life is that there's two law systems going on here there's the constitution the law of the land which everybody believes we live under and then like you said about maritime law and like everything else is maritime law none of it's based on on uh, the individual or or the law of the land that we're supposed to live on. That's right. That's right. That's why when you go to when you go to a courtroom, that's where you see it mostly. That's where you can really see it is in a courtroom. But people don't know what I'm talking about. But in the courtroom, you see the uh, the law of the land uh, hitting and confronting the law of the sea. You see, it's thousands of years ago, even before the Roman Empire existed. We're talking about back in the ancient Grecian Empire, before Rome even existed. There was already the idea being expressed in governments of Europe that in Asia also, that uh, there were two kinds of law on the earth, because there are only two things on the earth, there's land and water. That's, right. That's it. There's land or water. And so it was decided thousands of years ago, we weren't told this, but it was decided thousands of years ago that there should be two kinds of law. One should be a law that applies to land, and one should be a law that applies to the sea. And so today we still have something we refer to as the law of the land. And so you've heard that term in school, and from now, once in a while you'll hear that term again, the law of the land. Yeah, usually only with arguments about constitutionalities. Yeah, right. And so most people don't realize that why do you use that term, law of the land? Well, because if you understand law, there's a second law on the earth, the law of the sea, the law of water. Yeah. And so the law of the land is the law or the custom of the people that live on a particular spot of land. They, and so the custom of the people that live on a particular piece of land is recur, it's referred to as the law of the land. Why? Because the ancient Romans in their law, one of the maxims of Roman law was the will of the people is the voice of God meaning that whatever the people in a particular area want and believe, and this is the way they live, and this is what they want, the Romans said, so be it, that's it. So whatever the people say they want and whatever the people say they believe, that's fine. That's the way it is then. And so if you're going to go visit there, well, then you better find out you know, what the law of the land is because it's the law of the custom of the people that live in that particular kind of land. And so today, you can do things in, say, China, you can't do in South Africa. You can do things in, uh, in Russia, you cannot do in the United States. You can do things in Australia, you can't do in, in, uh, in uh, Panama. You know, so every country has a different culture of people. And that culture of that people is, is the law of the land, the law, the law of that land. And so uh, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. So if you're going to go to another country, you don't act like you act in your own country. You're in a different country. You're in a different culture. So you, you learn what they do and what they eat and how they view things and that's learn right. their laws. That's, you know? that's survival 101 is to uh, yeah. know what the locals know. That's exactly right. So you are abiding by the law of the land. However, there is a far more important law on the earth that makes the earth work. It's called the law of the sea, the law of water. And that is what we call the money. It's called the law of the sea, the law of, of water is banking law. That's why we say uh, things like uh, money goes through your hands like water. You know, I've heard that for years. Yeah, well, money goes through your hands like water. 
No, actually, money is is water. That's money right. is considered to be the liquid asset. That's right, currency. It's the cash, right? Yeah, it's the cash flow. And so it's water. And so money does go through your hands like water because money is considered by international law to be water. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a flow. And this is why uh, you put your money into banks. Why? Because you have a river bank. And what does a river bank do? It well, directs the flow of the currency. Because your money is called currency. Why? Because it is a current. It's an ebb and flow. Like the ocean. The tide comes in, the tide goes out. The waves come in, the waves go out. The money comes in, the money goes out. It's an ebb and flow. It's a currency. And so you put it into the bank, which is a river bank, and the river bank directs the flow of the current. See, and so uh, once you see how that works, uh, money is water, uh, and then you find out that money, uh, there's a whole world of knowledge about how money is negotiated and how it uh, operates around the globe. All over the world, nations of the world have uh, their own economics, and yet the whole entire world is connected to one operation. It's called maritime admiralty law, the law of money. Yeah. And uh, that's a whole story. Is this a, I mean, not to cut you off on this, but um, I know you were, you knew Zachariah Sitchin and worked with him. Um, yep. And whenever I read these books, like uh, the Book of Inky and stuff like that, they always talk about how uh, when Alulu and Inky first got there, they, they came in the water and they wore fish suits and, and they set up kind of on the water first before he moved into land. So uh -huh, is, yeah. that, is that why everything's based like off of that point that he was the, he came from the water, he was the, uh, the ruler of the water. And, and so everything that they built from then on out, uh, is is based on the water yeah, yeah. And, and the rules that were set up with him being the master of it yeah mm -hmm. that's right and since uh, your body is uh, over 76 percent water you are considered by law on the international law uh, a man or woman a human being is considered by law to be a maritime product and so, the, because you are 76% water, and when you were born, you came out of your mother's water. That's right. So, so her water broke, and you came out. <laughs> well, uh, and then when you came out, you were covered with water, and your lungs that uh, were, you know, were breathing water when you were when you were in your mother, and then you come out, and and so now your body is seventy six percent water. So you are considered a banking product. You are a human resource. Is, simply, is you know, that why it's, like, it's the natural? Uh, like as soon as someone, any any kind of family or business or anything, when they always call that, like you said, underwater. Like whenever they're broke and, and they're of course in debt, they run to the bank. Like the bank would save them. I mean, not like uh, not like they're going to, but it, and like you said, it, when it relates to reality, if you're drowning and you're underwater, you're trying to get to the bank to uh, get out and get on the land. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about it. I, guess, uh, I think I, you got it. Wow. Well, I mean, I mean, I didn't know that there was like a correlation. I just always thought of that when you said uh, about people being broke and they're underwater. I, it always made me think of drowning, and and then people. Well, do, I always say people are drowning in debt. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, let me give you an example. Uh, money goes through your hands like water. Well, because money is considered uh, a liquid asset. Right. And so we say things, that uh, all the different terms that we use and say every day that deal with water. For instance, we can say if, you, if you're really broken, you're totally out, then we say he's all washed up. Wow. I, I, <clears throat> I didn't even think of that one. 
<laughs> yeah. And why? Because, well, he's a wash in debt. Wash in debt. Yeah. And so when you go into court, you, you, uh, once you go into court, you're now in hot water. Wow. And you're going to need somebody to bail you out. That's right. I get and so, and so uh, therefore, you and the, the banks, they get flooded. They yeah. get flooded with bailout money. Wow, and they do that a lot, don't they? <laughs> yeah, and so your bank account has dried up or you have an offshore account. Wow, yeah. Or you're drowning <laughs> in debt. It's just on and on or, and on with that, isn't yeah, it? Well, yeah, I'm not through. Oh. And so you are laundering dirty money. Yeah. And you're doing it in the mainstream. Uh, the bank can levy your account. Uh, don't worry. One day your ship will come in, but your house is underwater. And so when you have no cash flow, you float alone at the river bank, which directs the flow of the currency. And so uh, we, we say not to make waves, you know, because uh, we don't want you to rock the boat here. <laughs> so the reason why is because we run a type ship, and we want to know if you're on board. That's right. Uh, why? With the dirty, with laundering the money in the mainstream. And if you are, you can work in the shipping department, or the lay, or the bank will levy your account. And so you know, even governments call statesmanship, and uh, our government is called the ship of state. And so, let me explain something to you, that uh, when a, uh, first of all, um, there's so much here I need to go back and, and set the stage for understanding all of this. First of all, every ship in the world, period, on the earth, any ship, a rocket ship, a sailing ship, uh, you know, or any kind of a ship, on the water or in the air or in the, whatever kind of ship it is, all ships must have a captain. That's the law. On all ships have a captain. A captain of an airline, that's an airship. Or if you're an astronaut, you, uh, you're a captain in the astronaut. Yeah, well, that's a rocket ship. <laughs> or if you have a sailing ship, well, then there's a captain on the ship. And the captain uh, on any ship is considered to be, by law, God, G-O-D. A captain on any ship is considered to be God. That's the law. That's right. Meaning, meaning, he is the law, period. Whatever he says, he's the law. You don't think so? You mess with a captain on board ship, and they'll throw you in the brig so quick, throw you into a, into a jail, and and report you when you get back on on land, and you go into prison. Yeah. Because why? Because the captain said so. Period. Yeah. So therefore, you need to understand that when a ship pulls into harbor, I was going to say all ships on the earth, any kind of a ship is always a female. It's always female by law. Right. Any ship. Why? Because the captains always say when they're talking about their ship, they always say, oh, she's a good ship and she's done well and she's this and she's that. Why she? Why is the ship she? Mm. It's because the ship delivers the product. An airship, an airliner is called an airship. It's delivering a product. Yeah. What is the product? It's you. That's you true. are the product. And so the, the shipping company is making money by shipping you. And so uh, all ships are female because the females produce the product. So, the, so in a marriage, the male man you factures but the female is in uh, the female is in um, labor creating the product for the man but he manufactured 
and then the female is uh, producing the product, and she's in labor, building the product. Yeah. And so, do you understand? So yes. now we talk. So <clears throat> you just made now, a, another epiphany to me too, because you went through the whole uh, maritime, like with the ships and the government and everything. So I guess that's why when a military person or wants to be in the military and they can't handle the maritime system, they get washed out. That's it. You get washed <laughs> out. Wow. That's it. And so uh, when the ship is female, all ships are female. So when a sailing ship like these big ocean liners pull into a harbor, say from Japan with $800 million worth of TVs or Toyotas or whatever, the ship pulls into a harbor where it parks is called its berth, B-E-R-T-H, a berth. Yeah. So the ship is sitting in her berth. And so every piece of, uh, of merchandise coming off that ship must have its own paperwork. Each car or each TV, each item must have its own paperwork. So it's referred to, the paperwork on board ship is referred to as a certificate of manifest. Why? Because yesterday, when we were all at the harbor, there was no ship here. But when you came in this morning to work, there's a ship sitting here. So it has manifested. Well, not only has it manifested, but it manifested $800 million worth of Toyotas also. Yeah. And so uh, each, each uh, piece has to have its own certificate of manifest. What are you talking about? Well, we want to know how much does it weigh and what color is it? Is it two doors or four doors and what color is it? Does it have air conditioning, etc.? And what was the make and the model, etc.? And so why? Because we need a certificate to show its value and what it is that was delivered. And so this is why when you, uh, you know, when your mother uh, is her now birth, she gives birth to you. And so the ship, she is in her birth. The ship is in her birth, and she's giving birth to you. And when you come out, you have to have a certificate. So it's called a birth certificate. And so when you get a birth certificate, it tells us, what are you, a Ford or a Chrysler or, or a television or what? No, you're a man. You've got two eyes. Yeah. Do you have two legs? Yep. Okay. And what color is he? He's black or he's brown. Uh, and who makes him? Uh, China or Japan or wherever. So that we now know what we've just added to the business of this world. We now know there's a new Japanese man and two black girls and, uh, and one guy from China. And so uh, that's the way they keep track on your birth certificate because you are a maritime admiralty product and you came in on your mother's birth. And so your birth certificate has to be signed by the dock because that's where the ship is sitting. It's at the dock. So the doc signs your birth certificate, and now you are a maritime admiralty product or a human resource. You're not a man or a woman. You're just, you're just here to make money, and the government's going to make money off of you. Corporations are going to make money off of you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you might even possibly make a few dollars yourself, but you are a business and this is what people do not understand. If you're a man or a woman or a child, by law, you are considered to be a corporation. You are a business. And, you're, and, and, and your wife or your girlfriend is also a business. She is a corporation. Just like General Electric and General Motors and Ford Motor Company, your body, as a man, you are a corporation. And, uh, and so that's why you, as a corporation, uh, there's, uh, if you're going to get married, uh, then she's a corporation. So now uh, one corporation is going to do business with another corporation. So when I see you coming out of a restaurant, say, 2 o'clock in the morning with some girl, 
and the next day I say to you, you know, that girl I saw you with last night, yeah, uh, she is bad company. And you say to me, mind your own business. Business? Company? Yeah, and then I find out you're going to get married, and, and she's going to be your partner. Yeah. What are we talking about? Partner and business and company? Uh, and so, therefore, you are a corporation, and therefore, one corporation is going to do some business, and thank God, what you're going to do is none of my business. <laughs> right. And what I'm doing, it ain't none of your business. Is that, business. Why, is that why it's so important? Is that why there's such a big thing about listing the father on the birth certificate because he's the manufacturer, like you said? That's right. That's exactly right. It has to do with where did it come from? Well, it came from your father. Oh, really? Was that German or, or, yeah. or Italian or what? And so, because why? Because you are a product. And so if we're going to sell you later because you are a human resource. Well, maybe who we're going to sell you to, they don't like Germans. Yeah. They wanted an African. Okay, well, then find, find a resource that's got an African uh, manufacturer. That's the way it works. So anyway, there's, uh, and so now you understand why you have to have a marriage license. You have to have a marriage license because you're doing business. It's called sex. If you go to the, uh, go to the library or get a law dictionary and look up the word commerce, commerce is business. Yeah. Look up the word commerce in a dictionary. Look it up what lawyers know. If you're going to talk about a word, find out what you're talking about. Go to a law dictionary and look up the word commerce. And it will tell you that in law, the word commerce means sex. It's just business. Happily, that's none of my business, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and who I sleep with is none of your business. That's right. But it is business. Why? Well, because if something happens, <laughs> you don't go to the Lord and talk to the Lord Jesus. You're going to court. That's right. <laughs> and you better bring your house and your money and your car and anything else you own, son, because that's just business. And, and, and that it seems was, to be everybody's uh, side action is trying to get into course. your business. They want, they want right. in your business. What are you doing? What do you got? Yeah, and I would say it's none of my business who I'm <laughs> sleeping with. That's my business. And then so that's – but if you're going to make it legal – <clears throat> and and join two corporations, that's fine. Anybody can do that, but you better get a license. Why? Because there's two corporations, and they're doing business. And you don't do any business in this country unless you cut the government in on it. Yeah. Period. You show the taxes, you pay the fines and fees, and you get the attorney, and you sign the contract. Now you can do business. And if you come together and create a, a, a new product, like a baby, that product belongs to the corporation that gave you the license. Because if they're giving you a license, that means they have the, uh, they have the power you don't. So you need to get the license from them. Why? Because they are the boss, not you. Well, if they give you permission to do something, then they are part of what you're doing. And so when the baby is born, it has three parents, you, your wife, and the government. And you don't think so? Wait till the government decides to come take your child from you. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's, and then you'll find out. It's terrifying, too, that people don't realize that they don't have – like you said, they don't understand how anything works and that they don't have any control over it either. That's exactly right. And then uh, when you when you get to understand, <laughs> uh, my goodness, there's just so many avenues we could go from this because it's a very big subject of how yeah. uh, the world works. Uh, it, let me it, give it's you even another worse example. now, though, because like the simple – uh, language to the layman's language, the people on the streets right now, and they don't even know that. No, no, they have no idea in the world about any of this. So, um, first of all, uh, I would ask 
and I, I do this all the time. I ask audiences uh, how how many states in our federal union? How many states are there? And most people will uh, say, uh, if they're smart and educated, they'll say fifty. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, President Obama said the the forty seven, the forty seven mm-hmm. states. Uh, so damn stupid, he didn't know there was 48, and then we added two. That makes it 50, not 47. Yeah. But that's okay. He didn't know from crap anyway. But uh, <clears throat> but so you say, how many states are there? Well, there's 48, there's two, there's 50. Actually, no, there's 51, and that's not even correct. Uh, there's, you know, Is that there's Puerto 50. Rico? No, 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 no. no. Okay. 51 states in our federal union. Uh, we got the, we got uh, we got the, the state of California, the state of Texas, the state of New York, and the state of Israel. That's right. Yep. Uh huh. So that's why the United States is spending so much money in Israel because it's a state of, it's the state of Israel, like the state of Alabama. In the state of Florida, in the state of California. That's right. It's the state of Israel. It's part of our federal establishment, period. Now, the other thing, though, is that you know, I was I ask, I, 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 we're talking about the 50 states in our union. How, how many states are in our union? Like I said, most people, if they're educated enough, will tell you there's 50 states. Yeah. To which I say no, no, and no. There's not 50 states. There's 100 states. Completely and totally different 100 states in our federal union. You just didn't know it. So there's then. So here's the way you understand that, that there's 100 states in our union. Every state is two states. But you are not supposed to know that. All you need to do is drink your beer and watch basketball and shut up. But uh, there are actually two states. In California, you have something called California State. And in California, we call it Cal, Cal State. So we got Cal State Northridge University and Cal State uh, Long Beach uh, College, Cal State this and Cal State that. Well, Cal State is California State. But you also have something called the state of California. Oh, that's different. California state is one thing, but state of California is totally different. So that's why you have to know what you're doing when you're dealing with government and state government. Are you dealing with the California state government? Or are you dealing with the government of the state of California? Because they're not the same at all. Wow. California state, like Alabama state, or New York state, or uh, or, 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 or Kansas state, uh, the, when you say the name of the state first, California state, uh, California state is that property we call California, that, that division of property, that land. Yeah. With its with its borders, that's called California State. But the state of California is the federal government operating inside of California. So you have a state government, but you also got federal laws here. You yeah. also have federal jurisdiction here. So you got two governments going here. You got the state government, and then you got the federal government. So the state government has the name of the state, like California state. The federal is called the state of California. So it's not California, but it is a state within the state. And so, uh, you know, people don't realize there are two states, so now we've got 100 states. Well, the same thing is true for you. There's two of you. There's the flesh and blood, the one that bleeds, the one that wakes up, the one that eats. The flesh and blood you is one thing. But there's two of you. By law, there is always two of you. Uh, There is a private you and a public you. 
The private you is your body, your personal, physical, blood and flesh body. Uh, and there is, and this is something you need to listen and understand, there is no law in this country or on the earth, there is no law that applies to you as a flesh and blood person. None. There is no law that applies to you. That's exactly why none of the state police agencies are respecting uh, your body as being part of the Fourth Amendment. Yeah, well, that's exactly right. But it has to do even bigger uh, with the idea that your body is uh, is uh, a private corporation. And, of course, if you one private corporation, which is Ford Motor Company, is going to do business with uh, Eli Lilly Company, a glass company, well, that's their business, but you need to get a permit, you need to pay a license and fee and ask permission. And so the idea is that there's two of you. There's a private you and there's a public you. So if you owe me $5,000 and you don't pay me, I cannot, by law, I cannot come to your home and steal something from you that's worth 5000 to get my money back. That You can't do that. Why? Because you're mixing apples and oranges. Because your private self, I have no control over whatsoever. I can't tell you who to sleep with. I can't tell you what to eat. And I can't tell you nothing. And so the private you is not in debt to me at all. It's the public you that's in debt to me. So I cannot come to your home. I cannot do anything to you and your home and your family if you owe me money. I can take you to court and, and, and deal with the government, uh, bring the government into it and deal in court. But now that's public. Lots of people are going to be in the courtroom. And this is going, and whatever that happens is going to be on the record, and people can go back 20 years from now and look at what you did, or look at what I did, and they can see the case. It's a public record. So therefore, there's two of you. There's the public you, which I can deal with in court, but there's the private you I can't deal with. And so understanding that, then there are two kinds of law. There's the public and the private law. Now, how do you know what, which way I am dealing with you, public or private? Well, the way you tell that in law, the way I can tell if I was a lawyer and looking at a case that you're involved in, I can tell immediately uh, how I'm going to deal with you because I'm not going to be able to deal with you privately. It has nothing to do with private. Uh, but I would deal with you lawfully in public, okay? So how do you tell the difference between you and the public and you and the private? It's how you sign your name. If you sign your name with the first letter being capital and the rest uh, lowercase, uh, upper and lowercase, then upper and lowercase, that represents your flesh and blood body. That's your personal flesh and blood self. And your name is what starts with a capital letter, then lowercase, capital letter, and lowercase. I have no way at all to deal with a capital and lowercase name in a court. I cannot deal with it in court. That's your personal, private self. So the only way to know how to deal with you in the public is the way you spell your name. And so in the public, your name must be an all capital letters, period. Your driver's license, your insurance company, your gas card, your, your, your grocery bill, uh, your house payment, car payment, I don't care what it is. If it's a piece of business of any kind, your name must be in all capital letters, period. That's, End of sentence. That's so ironic. I mean, I, I didn't, I've never heard that part before, but uh, all of my aliases as far as uh, entertainment or whatever, like my channel and uh, my name's on Twitter and Facebook, I always capitalize the whole thing if it's not my name, but I, you know, like that's just a coincidence, but yeah, so my, uh, I guess stage, yeah. na stage name is all caps, but my, when I write my name as a person, I always, yeah. Upper the, and lower case. Yes, yes. I, I didn't even well, that's, know that's that was a, a thing. 
Well, that's the correct way to do it by law. The actual correct way in law, if you're in court and if you're in a federal court uh, and, and, I'm, and I'm suing you and here on my lawsuit, I have your name right here in front of the judge on this lawsuit and it's an upper and lower case, the judge will throw it out. You don't have a case. Get out of here. It's over. Wow. Why? Because because the only way you can deal with another man, another human, is with all capital letters. Because that is your public uh, persona. That's your public name. Yeah. I can't deal with you in the private. Uh, I got no dealing with you in private. Now, understand as a private and a public you. Well, if you go to a restaurant with, say, 10 of your friends, and you're sitting in the back corner of the restaurant in a private conversation, you can, the way the world works, you can use any language you please, any cursing or any, any foul language you wish, and call anybody you wish anything you want. As long as your friends don't mind, as your friends don't mind, you can say anything you want about anybody. I don't care what color, nationality, or what. Uh, why? Because that's a private conversation between you and your friends. So what you say in private is nobody's business but you and your friends. Yeah. But if you go on radio or go out on the stage before a huge audience and start using those same terms and those same words and cursing, that's totally different. That's a whole different story. No longer is it private conversation. The government is empowered to protect the people. And so when you're using uh, language like that, you're hurting other people's feelings. <laughs> you are angering them as so though they have a right to come in and put you in jail. You can be sued and put in jail for using uh, you know, curse words and stuff and calling people names and racial terms and all of that in public. So that, are, you, are you telling me that legally you only have free speech in private? Yeah, you only have free speech in private. That's exactly right. You can you can say whatever you want in public as long as you watch your mouth because if you say anything against somebody else or you call them, you know, by by some derogatory term, uh, you know, then you can go you can get in trouble. Yeah. You know that as well as I do. If you go out and start calling people racist in the terms and, and calling them all kinds of names, uh, you know, they can sue you for liable and sue you for calling them those terms. Why? Because it's in public. They don't care if you're a Ku Klux Klan man and you really uh, are cursing and rant and raving about blacks or Jews or whoever. As long as you're in the church with the rest of your clan members and it's private, just between you and your, your, your friends in church, that's private. That's not public. But if you go out on radio and start talking the same way, now, now you're getting in trouble. Now you could be in trouble. The police can arrest you. Uh, you know, and, and it'd be a good thing if they did because maybe somebody's going to kill you for what yeah, you said. Right. Right, <laughs> and so there's a difference between the private you and the public you. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's why that's why they keep coming up with all of these new terms. Uh, yeah, like, that's right. I can't that's even keep track of them. They're like I know gender yeah. fluidity and uh, you know a trans <laughs> this trans that or you know the, a hate speech is like seems like a new term to me. I know people spoke with hate before, but now it's a thing that they're trying to prosecute you for. Oh, of course, of course, of course. Now, here's some more. Here's some more. Um, when the ship pulls into a harbor, as I said, she, she's a good ship, and she pulls into harbor, and she's got all this, um, uh, uh, you know, merchandise above, and she's got it all on her. So she is delivering the product. Well, that's what your mother did. She was in labor uh, uh, delivering you. She was in a delivery room, <laughs> and she yeah. delivered a product, which was you. And so uh, that's why you have to have a, uh, a birth, B-E-R-T-H, birth certificate. It's got to be signed by the doc. 
because that's where she was sitting by the dock <laughs> yeah. and, and her birth. Okay, so now uh, what you need to understand is that uh, uh, now just hold on and let me think about how to say this. this there's uh, two kinds of law: the land and, and sea, the land and the ocean. All right, in Latin, the sea, the S-E-A, the water, the land, and I mean, the, the sea and the ocean uh, is M-E-R, mer, mer as in mermaid, yeah. uh, or mer, uh, you know, mer is, is the sea. And so we say, and we've even had songs that say that the sea is enchanting. It's referred to as the enchanting sea. Why? Because if you go out by yourself and sit on the uh, the shore, or sitting on the dock, enchanting. You get hypnotized just watching. Wow. Enchanting, you get hypnotized just watching. Wow, shit. Okay, you're there. there. You yeah, we had some kind of internet connection issue. Yeah, that's okay. That's, that's the uh, world we live in. I think you were you were getting too deep. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's called computers. That happens all the time. So anyway, where I was, what I was saying is that uh, the sea is enchanting. And so it's like I said, well, you got songs called the Enchanting Sea. And so myrrh is the sea and it's enchanting. And so you put the two together, it becomes merchant. And so that's why we have merchants. And uh, the chanting is a form of music. That's why you have to buy things with a bank note. And yeah. so, uh, yeah, and so um, uh, let's see. Uh, the other point I wanted to bring out is that uh, the bank will levy your account, and one day your ship will come in. Well, uh, everything is is in in our world is run by ships and by maritime law, so that's why you have uh, a ship on everything. You have a scholarship, sportsmanship, a relationship. A yeah. dealership, a friendship, a fellowship, a hardship, apprenticeship, companionship, partnership, a membership, ownership, uh, dictatorship. So what we want to know from you is since you are on board the citizenship, don't yeah. rock the boat, mate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, the, so, so I guess the word ship literally means connection to the sea. or could, uh, That's right. That's right. Connection to the sea, and that's what you are. You are you are a maritime admiralty product. And so, uh, you know, with all of that, then you can begin to understand now banking, because, like I said, uh, you know, where do you put your your liquid asset? You put it in a bank. It's called a river bank. And what does a river bank do? It directs the flow of the current. See. Yep. 